Hi, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell, the global leader in regenerative therapies. Today I'm discussing stem cell therapy for kidney failure in India. So what exactly does the kidney do? Let's talk about that first. It's, it does a lot. It removes waste products and excess fluid from the body. It removes drugs from the body. It balances the body's fluids. It releases hormones that regulate blood pressure. It produces an active form of vitamin D that promotes strong, healthy bones, and it controls the production of red blood cells. So what are the reasons that a kidney may fail over time? Well, healthy kidneys filter about 200 liters of blood per day. That's an incredible amount. High blood pressure and diabetes are the two most common causes of kidney failure. 13% approximately of all U.S. adults have chronic kidney disease. In India, it's about the same. I saw studies that range from 8% up to 25%, so 13% should be about the average as well. Medications that can lead to kidney failure might be uh, anti-inflammatories, antibiotics, antivirals, transplant medications, HIV medications, and diuretics. There are some diseases such as polycystic kidney disease or glomerulonephritis that may lead to kidney failure. It usually doesn't happen overnight. It can if there's significant trauma, um, and that can be a, a side effect, but it's usually the end of a result of a gradual chronic loss of kidney function, and most patients have no symptoms until there's less than 20% kidney function. So uh, over 10% of American adults and India adults, um, so that's 20 million in America and in India because the population is five times more, it's probably close to 100 million, have CKD. Um, in the U.S. alone, 600,000 are on dialysis at any one point in time, and there's 100,000 waiting for a transplant. So if you take those numbers, you gotta multiply them by about five um, because of the increased population in India. All right, so here's a cycle. Uh, if you have mild um, kidney failure, you're going to have a glomerular filtration rate of over 90. So that's how uh, effectively the kidney is filtering uh, fluid. Um, and when you get down to stage two, it goes down to 60 to 90. Stage three is 30 to 60. Stage four is when you're getting down to 15 to 30, um, and you're getting anemic, high blood pressure, because you're not filtering the fluid. Um, and then stage five is basically complete failure, where the glomerular filtration rate is less than 15. So what are the symptoms? Well, as mentioned, you know, a lot of people don't have symptoms until the kidney is less than 20% function. But when you do have symptoms, it can be itching, muscle cramps, nausea, throwing up, um, not feeling hungry, lethargic, swelling in the hands and feet, back pain, uh, peeing more or less than normal, trouble breathing, and or sleeping. Traditional treatments for kidney failure include lifestyle changes, uh, changing the diet, you know, less sodium, smoking, smoking is terrible for your blood pressure and for the kidney function. Exercising more can help a lot, especially if uh, you're diabetic. Controlling the blood pressure and your glucose. Uh, medications may include a bone protection agent, a swelling agent like a diuretic, anemia medication like erythropoietin, cholesterol-lowering medication, and blood pressure modifications. All right, the last frontier. Dialysis artificially removes waste products and extra fluid from your blood. Close to 500,000 Americans are on dialysis. You can bet there's a ton more, uh, probably over 2 million people in India on dialysis. Um, you know, it's up to three times a week for four hours. That's a lot of time, you know, to be sitting there reading or watching TV. There are risks of an infection or a blood clot uh, where you have the um, catheter. It can cost over 100,000 US dollars per year. The average lifespan of someone who's on dialysis chronically is between five and 10 years. So it's not something you can stay on, you know, very, very long term. Now, when a transplant is done, um, the average wait time in the U.S. is about three and a half years. 13 people die every day waiting. <clears throat> transplant patients do live longer than those on dialysis. The problem is you have to be on immunosuppressive medications for life. 
those who get a living kidney donor usually last 12 to 20 years. And if you have a deceased kidney donor, um, that's about 8 to 12 years. So let's talk about stem cell therapy for kidney failure. Here's a 2020 paper out of Brazil. It reviewed, it's a meta-analysis, it reviewed a bunch of uh, studies for acute kidney injury. Cellular therapy with mesenchymal stem cells had benefits um, through various mechanisms such as reducing inflammation, reducing cell death, reducing uh, oxidation, uh, reducing fibrosis, which is scarring, modulating the immune system, and helping promote new blood flow. So this study talked about how promising it is and it should, should be part of the treatment of those who have acute kidney injury. Uh, this was a study looking at um, uh, mesenchymal stem cells when it comes to diabetic nephropathy. It's really such a common cause of uh, kidney failure is uncontrolled diabetes. So this study talked about how MSCs are a promising therapeutic strategy to manage the onset of diabetic nephropathy and its progression. It's very safe and it also protects the kidney from um, the diabetic-induced kidney failure. So this one looked at mesenchymal stem cell-derived extracellular vesicles. We call those exosomes, and typically when we do a treatment of R3 stem cell, we use both mesenchymal stem cells and exosomes together. So accumulating evidence indicates that mesenchymal stem cells release exosomes, and they deliver genes, microRNA, and proteins causing cell-to-cell -cell communication, which is called paracrine activity. Uh, they have trophic and reparative effects by delivering the genes, microRNAs, proteins, um, and it can reduce renal injury and improve recovery. Here's a study looking at umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells can safely ameliorate the prog progression of chronic kidney disease. So this was 40 patients, stage three and four, chronic kidney disease. The effect from the mesenchymal stem cells was that the GFR went up, the creatinine went um, down, and the BUN went down as well. So uh, improvements all around. No participants experienced any significant adverse events during or after the treatment and throughout the study period, which was one year. The cord blood mesenchymal stem cells um, and extracellular vesicles was safe um, and ameliorated the inflammatory immune reaction and improved the overall kidney function in grade three to four CKD patients. So we uh, administer umbilical cord uh, blood as well as extracellular vesicles, exosomes, um, to help in just the same way. Uh, this one looked at cell-based therapies for experimental chronic kidney disease. This was a meta-analysis where they pull a bunch of studies. This was only animal studies, um, so take it for what it's worth. But cell-based therapy improved all functional and histological outcome parameters and reduced the progression of CKD. Uh, this confirmed that cell-based therapies improved renal function um, in preclinical models. Preclinical means animal studies. This is a review um, from 2018 out of the University of Southern California. This was a meta-analysis that showed that administration of mesenchymal stem cells um, were very effective in slowing the development and progression of CKD. They reduced BUN, improved, um, or I'm sorry, decreased uh, scar tissue, fibrosis, um, after mesenchymal stem cells. Um, and they considered it, um, there was no tumor formation. Uh, it was a very safe procedure. So in conclusion, there's a lot of small studies. There's early clinical trials that show that stem cell therapy for kidney failure is not only safe, but it's typically very effective. Um, the clinical trials that have been done do show that high stem cell numbers are needed. The, the amount of stem cells you give is important. In fact, one of the things that we see is that people who come to us who have failed previous treatment probably just didn't receive enough stem cells. Um, these treatments we give are intravenous. We do not inject into the renal vein. That's unnecessary and adds unnecessary risk. 
I do want to point out that uh, embryonic stem cells and induced pluripotent stem cells are not ready for prime time by a long shot. So if anyone suggests that those are the types of stem cells you should receive, you should run away. The stem cells that we use are either mesenchymal stem cells or hematopoietic stem cells from umbilical cord tissues. They are safe to use. We've never seen any tumor formation. There's a lot of studies that show they are non-tumorigenic and they don't get rejected um, if the tissue is processed properly. So our treatment program in India is in New Delhi. We have a beautiful uh, location. It's, it's really gorgeous. We start our process with a free phone consultation, no charge for that. You'll get assigned a patient concierge representative who will help also help you with all the travel logistics. We do inf include free ground transportation from the um, airport to the hotel and the clinic and back. All international patients who come to R3 Stem Cell in India receive a free trip to the Taj Mahal. I can tell you firsthand, um, I took this trip to find out what it would look like from our clinic. It's about an hour and a half. We'll take you there in a, a nice car. We'll get you um, an included uh, guided tour uh, through the Taj Mahal. It is, it's unbelievable. It's one of the seven wonders of the world. The umbilical cord stem cell tissue that we use comes from the United States. Pristine safety record. It's processed um, with FDA quality assurance standards. We actually go above and beyond. These are pure potent stem cells, growth factors, exosomes, cytokines, secretomes. I call it a biological soup um, that is included. So start the process today. Visit us online at r3stemcell.com slash India. The uh, local phone number is on the website. You can call us to get your consultation scheduled at the plus one prefix for USA, 888-988-0515. We look forward to hearing from you and helping you out. Thank you.